Thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you today and to Reuters for facilitating this event, exploring one of the most significant and important challenges facing our world. My talk is focused on three main areas. Firstly, the challenge we face in achieving energy transition. Secondly, what we at Wood are doing to meet it and the impact this has had on the shape of our business. And finally, how achieving it requires a new approach and the role of purposeful investment. You don't need to work in the energy sector to understand the scale of the climate change challenge and therefore the enormity of what it will take to address it. It's an issue now firmly rooted in the mainstream and in the minds of people of all ages and backgrounds right across the world. Climate change and the quest for net zero now sits at the top of global political and public policy agendas, news bulletins and in boardrooms the world over, and rightly so. If we do not collectively do something about it now, there's nobody and no part of the world that will be left unaffected by that failure. And we, this generation, will not be forgiven by those who follow us and who today are so often among the most articulate advocates for change. So when I talk about investing with purpose, there can be no more compelling investment case than the one that presents itself as energy transition. There's no mistake in the growing need to address the way we all live and work and the impact we have on our planet. We've also heard a lot about why we need to change, when, yesterday, and what we need to do, or indeed stop doing. Where there hasn't been enough focus on to date is how. To my mind, the how is most important, and it will be a multi-layered approach, technical solutions, investment, policy, social changes, and balancing the dichotomy between the stimulus needed for both urgency and long-term commitment. At Wood, we recognise the unstoppable momentum towards a net zero future, and we see it as our role to apply our global expertise and the talent of our workforce to engineer practical solutions to these unprecedented challenges. In many ways, this has driven Wood to also undergo our own transition as an organisation. With a long history of evolution and reinvention, we've been very conscious of the changes in the market and the global socioeconomic megatrends driving the world, including climate change, urbanisation and the impact of the fourth industrial revolution. This led us to reposition our business very deliberately, broadening our portfolio beyond a traditional strength in oil field services across all of energy and the built environment. We see significant opportunities in the drive towards lower carbon energy systems and the need for more sustainable and resilient infrastructure. And indeed, many of these opportunities are already being realised, whether in existing growth markets where we have longevity and a strong track record, such as carbon capture and storage, solar energy, onshore and offshore wind, or in blue, green and biohydrogen, as well as in new growth areas, such as repositioning upstream assets for carbon capture and storage, downstream assets into biofuel refining plants, or new solutions in electrical vehicle charging and infrastructure. We don't, however, view a single pathway to achieving the energy transition, but rather multiple connected pathways that include conventional energy as a component of the energy mix. And if we can deliver hydrocarbon-based supply with a net zero impact, this will remain important for some years to come. The transition is towards a lower carbon energy system across the globe. Renewables will be a significant part of that and we're already seeing rapid growth as costs achieve parity with conventional sources. But to maintain energy security, which still underpins our quality of life, we need to accept and, and shape a role for hydrocarbons that's still compatible with our net zero ambitions. This is a pragmatic and important compromise, not a cop-out. The opportunity for all of us lies in helping deliver conventional energy sources as cleanly, efficiently and securely as possible, optimising the performance of existing assets whilst charting the pathway to newer, cleaner sources. As an engineer, I believe very much in the ingenuity of people, wherever they work or wherever they come from, to solve problems. That's why our focus at Wood 
is now firmly on three main areas. Engineering the solutions needed for a net zero future, enabling a more resilient, sustainable and livable world, and creating the future-ready industry required to support it. The primary challenge in engineering solutions for a net zero future lies in ensuring that investment levels are appropriate to meet demand. And crucially, it's not just about spending money, but about ensuring it's channeled towards the right blend of opportunities and the right market conditions are in place to enable any investments to deliver on the strategic intent. No small task, but for anyone who wants to be part of a purpose-driven mission, that's a challenge. In the near term, as economies recover from the pandemic, there will be a need to increase in supply to meet the rise in demand. So the challenge will be ensuring there is enough investment to support supply, but it will need to be done in a sustainable way, for example, through optimising existing assets at the same time as CapEx expenditure is funnelled to funding the development of new, more sustainable sources of energy in the future. And this leads to my third point on the need for purposeful investment. Considered purposeful investment is not simply that which meets the ESG criteria of certain investors. It has at its foundation the ability to meet the broad and diverse needs of society as a whole and derive profit from doing good. It's built with industrial ingenuity, science, technology and harnessing the vast power of the public and private sectors all working together. Success demands a new way of thinking for the energy industry as well as bold public policy that drives towards a net zero future but is unapologetically realistic about how this can be achieved. It means greater collaboration between all parties from the oil majors to the activists, government, policy makers to media. And it needs practical scientists and engineers like us. It also requires some nuance. It's easy to view this as a green and brown issue or a good and bad one, but we need to avoid the simplicity no matter how tempting as it underplays the complexity of the challenge. We can be crystal clear on what we need to achieve and we need compromise and flexibility in embracing the multiple roads that lead to the right outcome. It will also require new kinds of businesses and a new social contract between business and society. It will be about thinking beyond profit and towards purpose, continuously refreshing our license to operate and engaging in communities and society more broadly. With respect to energy transition and enabling a more sustainable, resilient and livable world, I would encourage us to think of the bigger picture, and at least that's how we see it, it would and to think about the development of cleaner energy and cleaner habitats in social and economic terms, and not solely as it relates to the environment. A cleaner, greener energy mix has the potential to drive social change, stronger, more resilient economies through more sustainable housing, heating and transport, to protect against the shocks and stresses of climate events and their impact on life, livelihoods and the built natural environments to make us more efficient, building more competitive industries, employing skilled workers, creating new jobs, helping people to reskill, to support the development of emerging economies and bolster the race to resilience, to help bridge the divide between our fragile rural economies and our urban ones. There's no doubt the increasing importance of ESG criteria and investor decision-making and in the energy industry. At a macro level, this is a force for good and something we should welcome, and it's driving the industry to consider some big fundamental challenges. The transition tension, if you like, that companies and investors are facing are numerous, and they include understanding the need to optimise an existing asset base that could possibly maintain supply for another 20 or 30 years with a societal demand for it to be less than 10. Ensuring a planned exit and managed decline that delivers sustainable energy supply along with sustainable earnings for the future of businesses that can create the next level of answers. How we transition a highly skilled energy workforce into new energy solutions and technologies. Ultimately, how we invest in our collective future with purpose 
how we create a model of capitalism that benefits all stakeholders, and how we eliminate the us and them thinking and behaviour and bring together all the stakeholders who are passionate about energy transition and work together to make it happen. I spoke at the energy transition and worked together to hear more of the how we will achieve the transition. I believe these are just a few of the how questions we must ask ourselves as a society and as an industry to help answer that. As scientists and engineers, we encourage a less polarised debate and focus on the technical solutions, appreciating too the need to quickly transition an industry, jobs and communities to a different future and purposely invest in projects and programmes that will make a difference in how we live today and tomorrow. Collaboration, compromise and investing with greater purpose will determine whether we succeed and how quickly we do so. The choices we make today, if they're the right ones, can have a profound effect on the world we hand over to future generations. And there's still time for our children and our grandchildren to think well of us. Thank you for your time today and I hope you enjoy the rest of this excellent event.